haven't heard. No. Okay. Hi. Uh, I don't know if he's coming or not. So we'll go ahead and get started. And call the meeting to order. This is the uh, November 24th meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. It's the first one that's been televised, and I can't say as I like those lights much, but and I, I know Mr. McGovern's out there somewhere, but I can barely see him because of, my, of the glare, but welcome. And to the rest of you in the audience, uh, we have a relatively brief agenda tonight, but uh, issues of importance to the people who have submitted these requests. Uh, the first item is to approve the minutes of the October 27 meeting. So moved. Is there any discussion of that motion? I didn't find any errors, and I presume nobody else did either, which is more often than not the case with our excellent secretarial service. If not, all those in favor of the motion? Seeing and those opposed, I see none. Minutes are approved. Uh, now under the heading of new business, uh, the first item is to hear the request of St. Bartholomew's Roman Catholic Church. Roman Catholic Diocese of Portland, 6 Two Lights Road, tax map U37, lots four and 4A for a conditional use permit for additions and renovations to the existing building. Uh, a few minutes ago, I was handed a, a copy of a note to Bruce Smith. Uh, did the rest of the members get this, Bruce, or am I the only one? No, I, that's okay. the only one. I, I just uh, late this From Harriman Associates, who is the uh, uh, agent for the diocese in this matter and uh, the designer of this project and it reads as follows on behalf of st bartholomew's church we respectfully request to reschedule our meeting with the zoning board of appeals for december 22nd 1998 the reason for the delay is that we are still working on a preliminary oh, i'm sorry on delineating this is handwritten so uh, delineating the wetland areas and feel that without this information we would not be able to answer some of the members concerns referring to the board thank you for your cooperation uh, let me add that uh, just for my own comment and i'm not sure about the other members but i had a lot of questions about that application for <clears throat> harriman and others largely because the application was somewhat incomplete in my mind in terms of understanding what was going on so i would hope uh, if the board agrees to table uh, Bruce, that you would convey back to Harriman that uh, we need some help in the, in the application in terms of more detail as to what's I, really I have, happening. Uh, conveyed that message, and I, I will do so again. Mm -hmm. uh, so a motion to the table would be appropriate if uh, there's a member who would be willing to make it. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor of the motion to table this application? <laughs> Any opposed? Seeing none, uh, it is tabled. Excuse me. Are we tabling something that that really hasn't been brought before us? Or they're just withdrawing this. So no, it's on our agenda, and I think uh, with with they're not withdrawing it. They've just asked it to be rescheduled. So I think it's properly tabled to the next are, meeting. Are we going to have public notice? Uh, yes. Mailed out again on this, or is this? If it's tabled, there'll be no public notice. Go back out. No. It just It'll be an automatic mm -hmm. tabling. Uh, I would suggest that you might want to, could you arrange for public notice? Because there has been some interest in this, I believe, on the part of the public. And I can, but customarily, once we, once we do that, it's, it, it, we don't do it again if it's a continuation because it runs into expenses that, that, that yeah. we don't count for in the application fee. So I'd be more willing to do that. Um, but if we do it for one, we should. Yeah. Well, it doesn't happen very often, and because this is... Uh, and let me let me say this. I do know that St. Bart's is is in in the process of mailing out uh, to all the abutters a notice uh, to meet with them in an informal uh, situation at the at the uh, church, so to discuss it with the neighbors. So. Um, well, and we could also rely on the power of television for all the people who will sit and watch this meeting. Uh, 
well, whatever you legally do, I guess, is, is, is acceptable. I just want to be sure the word gets out because there may be people who would like to know that they have another chance. So I'll leave it in your hands. But if, if you don't normally re-advertise table motions, then I guess there's no need. But um, Mr. Chairman, yeah. I, I, I would have to presume that there is a uh, that the uh, code enforcement officer has a list of all of those who re receive abutters notices. That seems to me that wouldn't be terribly expensive just to put a uh, to that group alone. Just to that group alone, uh, so that we've gone on record as have done something to notify them that we've got a a, uh, a table and it will be reintroduced supposedly at the December meeting. Let me ask you this. I haven't, uh, Bruce, I haven't seen any uh, abutters comments or public comment for that matter on this. There but I understood some, there that there was some. There are some comments um, and some questions that, that some, uh, uh, at least one abutter is, is wanted to present tonight because she couldn't be here. She wanted you to, to read them in the record and, and have the questions answered. Uh, and there has been several phone calls uh, questioning uh, the project, but uh, let's take Emory's suggestion. I'd like, if you, I'd appreciate it if you do that. I, I'm a little concerned here that we want to be sure the word gets out, and uh, that even if do it whatever the least intrusive way for you is another ad or notice to the we'll abutters. The same thing again. Yeah. Same abutters. Yeah. As, um, yeah. uh, I'm sorry to be so wishy-washy, but I'm a little uneasy here. It's not a problem. I, yeah. I, the, the way the way we always looked at that was that they get a first notice that alerts them of that meeting, and and that meeting alerts them of what happens at the next meeting or whether they got the notice. So the, so it's an ongoing uh, situation. Well, part of the reason I'm concerned is because we're not even getting a chance to hear any of the details in the public session here either about this application or especially about the changes that are apparently being made or the additional investigation that's being done on the site and so on. So. That, it may be that some of the issues being raised will not uh, remain as issues once that information is out. So I, I just think it would be prudent on our part to uh, make that additional information or make the fact that we're tabling it for that reason known to people. So especially to the abutter. So if, if you can do it that way or whatever way you would normally do it, it's fine. Uh, Mr. Chairman, ha have we? Uh communicated to the architects, to Harriman's, or is it done through, or how is it done to let them know that, you know, we really didn't get a very good uh, presentation in, in the packets we received to know. I, I frankly didn't know and don't know totally what they're going to do. Uh, do they know that, they're, that, that this presentation? Well, if they don't, they do now. I mean, I conveyed as much to okay. Bruce a few minutes ago and privately as well, and, right. and you've just and done I, it. So I've already expressed yeah. okay. the concerns <clears throat> to them that the board has okay. uh, based on what you, your conversation with you the other day. Yeah, okay, fine. Thank you. There's no further discussion on this issue. Uh, uh, thanks for bringing it up, Joe. I think it's, you know, in terms of letting people know it's it's good to go the extra mile, I think. Uh, let's move on then to the next item, which is the, uh, to hear the appeal of William and Kelly Lewandowski, 11 Wombeck Road, Tax Map U12, Lot 77, for a rear property line variance of 16 feet from the required 30 feet and a right side property line variance of 4 feet from the required 30 feet to add 5 feet by 17, 8 inches. Uh, and seven feet by 19 to the existing footprint, replace the existing garage, and add a second floor uh, to all as per plans submitted. That's a mouthful. Uh, is there someone here representing the Lewandowskis? Yes, sir. If you would, there's a mic. Thank you, and um, good evening. I hope. I'm William Lewandowski, my wife Kelly, and uh, my son William. I hope the information you have in front of you is substantial or adequate enough to gain insight into our cause, if you will. We're appealing to the board, as outlined, uh, to hear a request for a rear and side line variance. 
there is an existing sheet in your packet. It shows a 11 by 17. It's labeled existing in the bottom right corner. That perhaps more than any other document clarifies uh, what we're attempting to do, if you will. It's a schematic looking down on the property and labeled existing. Uh, actually, I don't see that. Hang on just a minute. I must be here somewhere. You got. You, you certainly gave us plenty of stuff to work with, Mr. Levinowski, and, and I looked at the property. But, uh, oh, here it is. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. It shows the existing structure and the uh, abutting neighbors. The neighbor to my right, Andy and uh, Ann Ingalls, is labeled. My Rear property line uh, is owned by Bessie Burkett. You can see the 14 foot current setback of the structure from her property line labeled again 14 feet. The setback for Andy Ingalls property labeled 26 feet from the existing garage. The shaded areas represent the increased Footage, if you will. Do you see well, that on the? I don't have any shading on. Mine. All right. Bruce, what is on the, on the building? All right. Yeah, the last page in your packet, I think. In Perhaps on the building application, it'd be more clear. Yeah. I think that the very last page is a copy of the building application, building permit application, and it contains a drawing which has the same perspective. Exactly. There yeah. is another drawing in the. Yeah, well, you got this one, but there's no shaded on But there are no shaded areas. I apologize. Apparently, it was shaded on the application and not the uh, larger drawing. That's right. Go ahead. Um, our, our request is to add a second story, thus ending up with what, a story and a half. It's not a full second story. It would. The uh, second story is outlined by the uh, elevations of the structure itself. We are trying to keep this minimal. <clears throat> Our reason for going up is stated. We are currently living in 800 square feet heated. There's a porch which is not heated, which gives us a total square footage of 1,000 square feet. One bathroom, one bedroom family of three. We assumed falsely, apparently, that we could always go up, but apparently realizing the, the regulations that we need a variance even to go up. Hence, we are, we are here tonight. Um, the structure was built in 1946. It was one of the original L.C. Andrews log homes. The interior is made out of logs. It's been sheathed over. And the um, structural contents of the members and structures inside are, are quite inadequate. We, we like the location. It's a beautiful lot. But after two years this February of living in the residence, it has just become uh, very difficult to store things, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I won't go into the details, um, but we are here tonight to try to expand the structure. Uh, I have covered the points in the, uh, the application. I've responded to the questions A, B, C, and D. And I believe I've answered those adequately, unless somebody has a question uh, regarding any of those specific. I have, I have one question. Um, yes. Did, were we going to have a survey? I talked about, or with Bruce, the, the need for a survey. I called a surveyor. Um, I then found a, the remains of a survey, irons, 
in the ground based on a survey done for the septic system, I believe around 1980. Realizing those lines, talking to my neighbors, I was able to come up where the line is uh, very close to, as I've outlined it here. Um, in that I was trying to seek a variance, I was already close to those lines and if it was a new structure that was being erected to locate the new structure, I felt that would be important. But uh, I have not at this point done a survey other than what's the description on the deed outlining the, uh, the property lines. But there is an iron stake in the corner and I reviewed it with the neighbors uh, where the lines are exactly so they have an understanding. Well, I appreciate that statement, but as I told you, the board voted last summer to require a minimum of a Class D survey on submittal. Right. And that's, that's why I had, yeah. had asked you to submit. And Bruce, a Class D survey again encompasses what? A Class D survey is just, is, is not a full survey, and it's not a survey at all, actually. It's, it, it's, uh, it's what survey companies do for a mortgage inspection. And so it's not necessarily a legal document for, but it's, it certainly gets us closer to uh, something that's accurate rather than a site plan done by the app. When you bought the property a year and a half ago, did, did the bank or whoever, did you have a mortgage and was it well, uh, surveyed then for that purpose? Uh, you may Henry, well have did, it in your records. They did a, a title search, but no in-ground survey was done and no Class D survey was done. Um, and I understand the board's request of a Class D done. Uh, again, uh, that can be done. I, would comply with any request of the board. Certainly, if they feel that is relevant here, I would, I would be happy to have that done and pay that expense. We established that as a policy last summer after learning the hard way uh, in, in several cases after one after the other that, uh, uh, how should we put it, things aren't always accurate in the Cape. <laughs> Some of the older homes in particular, so. Exactly. Uh, and. Uh, it, it, you know, it does make sense. I, I, I'm not denying that at all. Okay. Let's, let's uh, go on, see if there are questions from board members uh, before we pursue this further. But I, I, I've Amir, got, go ahead. Yeah, I've got a couple of questions. They're kind of, obviously you changed some of your figures in the process of this, and I have got a, a height with, it, with the height whited, whited out here. It does not provide, looks like I got three feet of height is 34 the correct height? 34 is the correct height. Okay, that's, I have another, uh, another question on uh, <clears throat> the proposed second floor. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> you show what I presume to be uh, the stairs, the two bedrooms, bath, and then there's something else that continues on out, which I don't. That's. That's unheated, unfinished space above the garage. Okay. Um, okay. So, all right, this presumes then that you're going to butt up against the garage and you will access those, those areas for with a new addition. For a storage area, exactly, above okay. the garage. There'll be a, a, a second floor put on the garage, too, at the same time. The garage is going to be ripped down. And Rebuilt. Oh, I knew it was going to be changed, but okay, I, I understand that now. It didn't, I, I didn't, I guess I didn't realize that. My last question at the moment concerns, uh, again, another whiteout. I presume your structure setbacks on the, uh, the application for the building permit, the proposed structure setbacks, you have 35 front. The side is whited out now with nothing there. Do I presume it stays at 30, 26? Correct. Okay. <clears throat> um, right. I get, uh, that 
you know, basically takes care of the technical side of my questions. Great. Thank you. It was Other questions from the board members? Mr. LePron. Uh, on your application, you have the estimated cost at $125,000. Is that what you paid for the house? No, I paid, I paid more than that for the structure. Estimated cost of the construction? The, the plan, yes. if all, is to have the house demolished, including the garage, uh, basically a thousand foot structure now plus the garage, that would be demolished. The original foundation is fine. That would be retained in a new deck or structure built up from that. Um, an estimated cost, uh, talking with builders, runs about that 125000 on top, obviously, of what we paid for the, the, the property itself two years ago. What, does, what did you understand uh, the total estimated value figure that you have well, the value, to represent? Well, the value would be a combination of the cost of the new structure plus what we purchased it for. Any other questions, Mr. Fustasha? Yeah, through the chair, I have a question <clears throat> for the code enforcement officer. Did you hear what he just said, uh, Bruce? Yes, and I didn't realize the house was going to be. Is uh, that permitted to tear it? If there was a fire, can he rebuild? Can he can he tear down all four walls it's, and it's, rebuild on it's, a? It's my interpretation that you can destroy the house yourself and build an exact footprint as long as you do it within one year of the, of the time of such destruction. Can you direct me to uh, any place in the well, ordinance? You could read it that, it that it would be other than, other than South Will, but that isn't the way I've, oh, I've interpreted it. I have to say, I was under the impression the only thing being destroyed was the garage and that that was mm -hmm. going to be no, incorporated in, into the new. Uh, no, and I want to clarify that the structure is so poor and it's made out of logs that you cannot add a second floor to the 50-year-old log walls that exist. So when you, in your opening comment, said that the structural support is uh, deteriorating or something, that's what you meant, that it was inadequate to support the weight of, a, of the additional construction? Correct. Additional I, wish, I wish it was differently, but... Page 34, Joe. Page 34? Any non-conforming structure which is located closer to the required setback from the property line and which is removed, damaged, or destroyed may be reconstructed, replaced, provided the permit is obtained within one year, and then it goes on. So to me that if he was simply removing what ex what's existing and replacing the same footprint to the same square footage, then he wouldn't need to come to this board. But because, because he, he's either adding on or replacing the whole thing, and he's and he's and he's increasing the size of the footprint, increasing the square footage. Uh, that would that would be an increase in a non-conforming structure, which means that the board would have to look at that. You're only grandfathered to, to footprint and, and square footage. <coughs> so it, it it really it really makes no difference whether he's going to rip it down and start over or add on. I mean, the same results would be would would. Uh, would uh, end up, you'd end up at the same place. Uh, Boy, I, I'm reading on and, and I've got a hard, I got a hard time uh, agreeing with, with the interpretation. Um, What's your interpretation, Joe? And, and where do you see it? Page 34, you mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the top paragraph. Um, Reconstruction, and again, this is the first time I've read this uh, tonight. Reconstruction of a non-conforming structure not in compliance with these limitations may, may be per permitted, provided that such reconstruction is in compliance with the setback requirement to the greatest practical extent, as determined by the Zoning Board of Appeals in accordance with the purposes of this ordinance. In no case shall a structure be re constructed a replace so as to increase its nonconformity. And that's what we're doing. We're increasing yes, and, and, and had I known that it was going to be completely removed, <clears throat> my wording would have been such that, that, that would have reflected that you do have the right to, 
to to make that more non, more conforming. Okay. But the end result is he still could put an application in at 26 feet from the sideline and 14 feet from the rear, and then the board could choose to do what they wish with that. Okay, but I'm reading right here that we cannot grant this because he's asking for us to increase the nonconformity. The last sentence. In the sense of the enlargement, you mean? Well, the, the way I read the last sentence, it says, in no case, should, in no case, it doesn't say unless a variance is obtained. No, I understand. Because in no case shall a structure be reconstructed or replaced so as to increase its nonconformity. I believe that nonconformity is in relation to the, to the, to the, to the setbacks to the property lines. That okay. would, that's what my belief is. Okay, but we are the ones that are voting, and my belief right now is that we cannot grant the variance to increase the nonconform the nonconformity of the structure. Uh, that's, that's the way I, I answer my question, Joe. In your in your thought, what what is the increase in nonconformity since the lot line changes? I mean, the sideline changes aren't. Uh, well, he's asking for a bigger building. That was my question. That's why I said it. you're talking about the enlargement part of it. The enlargement portion okay. of it. And uh, that leads us back to this troublesome language that we've had have visited many, many times on the previous pages, page 32. Uh, Bruce, is, are you suggesting, uh, now that we're kind of narrowing down to a different kind of question than we started with, are you suggesting that the enlargement uh, issue doesn't uh, apply or doesn't impact this application? I, mean, I understand you're saying that the, the nonconformity on the lot line distance doesn't change. What I'm suggesting but, is, is that, that what I'm suggesting is that because it's going to be completely replaced, the board does have the right to look at that and relocate it to make it less nonconforming to the setbacks. Whereas if, if he was just adding a second floor onto an existing or adding footprint size, then, then the, board, the board would be looking at, at a variance only. They couldn't, they couldn't ask for relocation. They could deny the application. Yeah, but there's not That's the two yeah. differences. But that doesn't mean he wouldn't sub still submit the application at the same location. Yeah, but there's nothing that, that's being suggested here that would reduce the nonconformity. Or if there is, tell me what it is. Could you repeat that, please? Well, you said a minute ago in answer to my question that the board would have the right to move it to reduce the nonconformity. Right. Instead of 26 feet, they could pull it back to 30. Okay, but, but, they, they, but within the context of the application, which is being built on the existing foundation, I don't understand how we would have the ability to do that, or at least the ability to do that without totally changing the intentions of the applicant. So I just want to make sure I'm, you and I are communicating so I understand what you're saying clearly. Well, I'm not quite following your line of thinking, but um, it, it goes on to say that in determining whether the building's reconstruction or replacement meets the setback to the greatest practical extent, the Zoning Board of Appeals shall consider the physical condition and type of foundation present. And certainly that weighs heavy in, 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 in the, I would assume that it would weigh heavy in the applicant, I mean in the board's uh, decision. If it's, a, it's a, if it's a good foundation, uh, that, that, that they wouldn't put the applicant through ripping the foundation out also. Well, that's true, but just, just in simplistic terms, follow the reasoning that Joe's established here. One is that there's uh, a proposal to enlarge, which is a, an increase in nonconformity, and the proposal posits that it will be on the existing foundation. So the question to be answered is just an opening and the question before we even talk about what the board is willing to do is do we even have the right to deal with this question is this increasing the nonconformity in such a way as to violate the last sentence of that first paragraph under number four as i stated before i don't believe it does i, I think that nonconformity is to is is geared to distances to property lines because that simply that's it, this language came out of shoreland zoning. This is where the language came, mm -hmm. and it was it was talking about the, the, the distance from the high water mark to the nearest point of the building, and and what shoreland zoning said was that you shall not increase the nonconformity, but the board has a right to 
look at that and pull it back so it becomes more non-conforming, completely non-conforming, or completely conforming to the water setback. They took that language from the shoreland zone and they put it over here. So I know what the intent was with shoreland zone. And I'm assuming that's how the language got, that language got transferred. Okay, so that goes back to the question I asked two or three minutes ago, which to clarify was that your statement is, if I'm correct, that the issue of enlargement doesn't apply to this case with regard to its conformity or nonconformity. There is no proposed change in conformity with the current lack of non, uh, current nonconformity as I read the application, but there is a change in size in a, by second story. Right. So I have to interpret what you said as, as concluding in your mind that the issue of enlargement is not relevant here. It's only a question of, of lot line distance. It's relevant for, for expansion of a nonconforming structure, yes. But I don't believe that the nonconformity they're talking about here is anything more than setbacks. <clears throat> Had, 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 had I been aware that the whole house was going to be completely torn down, I would have advertised, or I would have probably worded that, that, that um, a reconstruction replacement, that the board would have the right to, to, to move that, to make it conforming. <coughs> and then I would have also at, put in for the variance, but the end result's the same. Yeah. All right. There is Other. a question with a non-conforming structure, non-conforming building are the same. On page 12, the definition of a non-conforming building is a non-conforming building, a structure is one that does not meet the space or bulk standards of the district to which it is located. It is allowed solely because it was in lawful existence as of an effective date of this ordinance or as of the effective date of the subsequent amendment which rendered that building non-conforming. Right. So the definition doesn't make uh, of a non-conforming building, assuming structure and building are used interchangeably, does not refer to plot lines, refers to bulk uh, the space and bulk, the space and bulk, if you go to space and bulk, that, that is all your side setbacks. That's what that is, your, your side, your rear, your front setbacks, your, your frontage issues. Uh, if, you know, on, on page 52, 53 is, is the one that conform, that, that, that's in relation to his application. And that's what the space and bulk standards are based on. <clears throat> um, incidentally, Mr. Cronin, it uh, should be noted, has arrived and is on the agenda. I've never had the opportunity to do that. Is on the, uh, on the present roster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll put you on the agenda later to talk about that. Uh, Glenn, did you have a question? That uh, it, it seems to me where there is some, some confusion uh, that <clears throat> perhaps this matter be tabled and that the uh, code enforcement officer <laughs> maybe could readdress this and, and also a Class D survey I think could be in order. <clears throat> it's, it's unclear to me as to what is happening. Are you tossing that out for a thought or is that a motion? It's, it's a thought leading to a motion. Okay. <laughs> Make the motion yeah. and I'll second it. I, I move that this be tabled for reconsideration and a Class D survey. Second. It's a second. Oh, all those in favor of that motion? <clears throat> Anyone opposed to that motion? Mr. LaProd's opposed. <laughs> and well, I. I can, this thing got. Bob's uh, opposed, and Bob is abstaining. We don't discuss tabling motions. I know we don't. <laughs> but if it's going to be tabled, and it looked like it carried four to two, or four to one to one, um, I certainly would like to get a legal interpretation of uh, the. Uh, That's what I heard the board. I heard the board say that. Yes. I think that was inherent. I, I, got, in I want to make sure we do have it because <laughs> I, I think that's going. That was implied. All right. I think that was inherent right. in the thought. That's why I was looking yes. to see whether there was a motion. Listen, we're we're tabling a few of these items. Um, next month is. Uh, Merry Christmas. Huh? Well, it, it's it's a day that's uh, celebrated by a number of people. Um, are we uh, loading up a, an awkward mm -hmm. time of the, uh, the month uh, for and, a lot and, of these And items? I, for one, I'm going to be out of town that week, so we need to talk about that as an administrative matter. But uh, Mr. Lewandowski, I'm sorry, I don't know whether you've been keeping up with this discussion, but, but it's clear that the board, uh, both unofficially and officially now, is, is concerned about several things on what's being proposed here. Uh, first of all, 
despite all the material you provided, it wasn't clear that, in fact, the, the house was coming down. Although I must say, as I saw that picture or drawing of the new house, I thought, boy, it's going to take a miracle uh, architect to make, get that result with that house. Uh, and secondly, there's some internal questions that we have about the actual proper interpretation of, uh, let me draw your attention to it officially here, uh, section B3 of uh, Article 4, which is on page 34 of the ordinance, just so you can refer to it at the top. Uh, and the whole question of really what the board's authority is here with regard to a nonconformity uh, and an enlargement situation that you're proposing here. So uh, whenever it is that we're going to meet in December, we'll deal with this then, and hopefully we can get an answer from you and from our own staff about uh, what applies here. Mr. Chairman, can I ask a couple of questions of Mr. Lewandowski just for easier interpretation for next time, or shall we delay it? Uh, if your intent is to ask him questions that will help him clarify it the next time, yes, that's fine. Otherwise, I'd leave it. It, just, it, it will clarify for me if I can ask a question. And I go to the, to the site plan that you have. And uh, you have hash marks through what I presume to be the existing garage. Everybody says it. Then you have seven feet above. Uh, you, you're indicating that this is... Uh, that's new square footage of the new proposed structure. Okay, so that's new. Now, what is the hash mark? That, that's also new. All right, so, uh, all right. So, other than filling in between the house and the garage, the garage is detached from the house somewhat by a couple feet. Yes. I am requesting that additional square footage to the rear of the garage and to the southerly end of the house okay. by those amounts. Based on... Uh, your seven foot addition, I would presume that your side setback is. Uh, Let, let's not go there. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was just trying to say it looks like it's. Let me go. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, um, so, is, uh, may I address the chair? Please. As I understand it, the board will look into this and clarify my intent to demolish the structure increase the square footage beyond what is existing at a ground level uh, as a, and also, of course, going up. No, that's not the issue. When I talk about enlargement, we're talking about going up. Although I suppose that, yes, going out on the side, I mean, I guess that's a little unclear. You said you're going to use the existing foundation, but you're still going to add square footage on the first floor? Correct. By the, overhang or? No. Um, It'd be using a, a, a comp combination of the existing foundation plus new footings as new outlined footings. in my application. Between the house and the garage. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, but there's also a back. Uh, have, have you had uh, any, an architect or any uh, kind of a building uh, professional work on this? No, but I plan to, but I wanted to get beyond this point before no, I, I invested the dollars in an architect or builder. I understand. Uh, the, part of the problem we're having here is, some, is the drawings are a little unclear in terms of what your intentions are, and uh, I think that's some of the difficulty. But the, the cogent question from a legal point of view that we were referring to earlier on page 34 relates to this increase in size over and above the existing non-conforming use. And that would apply whether it's going out or up, potentially. And the, the lack of clarity on the part of the board members and the staff uh, as to whether, in fact, it's appropriate to look at that provision in this kind of a situation. And as I understand it, it's also been suggested by the staff that the board could, if it chose, require that the footprint, in effect, or the foundation be moved to reduce nonconformity as part of the requirement for allowing the construction, which is not to suggest that that's been discussed or is going to happen, but just a wrinkle on it I hadn't been aware of. 
So we're looking to you to clarify the drawings and the intentions as much as possible, which will clear up some of this, and to Bruce to clarify the interpretation of the ordinance in a way that gives the board some comfort about what they can and can't do. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next item is to hear the appeal of Ellen and Dale Brewer, 35 Eastman Road, tax map R04, lot 11, for a left side line variance of 1.83 feet from the required 30 feet and a 0.83 feet uh, front property line variance from the required 40 feet to add a second floor to the existing single story dwelling. Is there someone here representing the applicant? Good evening. I'm Ellen Brewer. My husband couldn't make it tonight. He's sick. Um, I submitted a standard boundary survey with my application. And what we intend to do, or what we'd like to do, uh, is to replace the existing roof so <laughs> replace the existing roof with a salt box style roof, mm -hmm. um, keeping uh, the look of a cape in the front, but creating a full dormer across the back. Um, the house was built in 1950, and it, we're not expanding the footprint of the house at all. It doesn't meet the setbacks the way it is now, and it won't meet the setbacks with the new roof. <laughs> Um, there is presently two bedrooms on the second floor, um, but the ceiling height is slightly less than six feet. And the reason why we'd like to replace the existing roof with a salt box style roof would be to gain some ceiling height and storage space and also to um, add a bathroom between the two existing bedrooms. <clears throat> the fact that you're not six feet tall doesn't make this better, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, the people who built the house were very short, apparently. Are there questions from the board? I guess nobody has any. I, my own, when I looked at the house, I tried to figure out how you could see this change from any place else in the area, and I, and I can't figure that out. So I, I guess there is no other visual impact on on the neighbors but leading to the question of do we have we had any uh comments from neighbors uh either to you as the applicant or to the staff no well, we haven't um my neighbor that is the closest abutter to the um left of the house is here for moral support oh, okay. Good. all right <laughs> apparently he doesn't have any problems with we'll let him speak for himself uh, yeah I have i'll have you up in a minute any uh, other comments you want to make or any questions for the applicant? I, if, as I read this, the, the uh, and, I, and I, I, looking at your plan, you're just, mm -hmm. uh, you're not going to change the height at all. You're it, just going to take it, the. It will, putting a new roof on will create, it will create a steeper pitch. It will increase the height of the roof at the peak by about four feet. Okay. Going from roughly 21 feet to 25 oh, feet. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm sorry. I apologize. I didn't look close enough. <laughs> and we do intend to keep the two um, dormers that are on the front. There's two existing window dormers on the front, and we do in keep, intend to keep those, keeping the front of the house virtually unchanged except for the steeper pitch of the roof. If there are no other questions from the board, thank you. Yes, sir. How would you like to come up and just put your name on the record and use the mic if you would? Good evening. I'm Mike Roth, and I live next door to Ellen and Dale, and I understand what they're going to do. And I don't have any problem with it. So. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Roth, was it? Um, Apparently not, thank you. Okay. 
I'm glad your neighbors on the other side didn't come. I'd have difficulty with that name, I'm afraid, <laughs> if it's still owned by the same people. Actually, it's not. Oh, it isn't? Okay. <laughs> uh, if there is no one else here to speak on this issue, which apparently there isn't, uh, we'll declare the public hearing portion closed and uh, see if there's uh, discussion or a motion from the board. I'll make a motion. Okay. I don't know why I seem to do this all the time. Well, it's not good at it. Well, what you do best. It's good at it. It's just it's practice. Practice. Uh, practice in this <clears throat> Upon the application of Allen and Dale Brewer for a variance for the strict application of the zoning ordinance requirement of section 1962, a hearing was held uh, November 24, 1968. The applicant seeks a variance of the left side property line of 1.83 feet from the required 30 feet and a front property line variance of 0.8, excuse me, 0.83 feet from the required 40 feet to add a second floor to the existing single story dwelling. The finding of facts, the applicants are the owners of the property at 35 Eastman Road, which is in residential B district tax map, RO4, lot 11 containing 0.99 acres. The upward expansion will not increase to the existing setback uh, nonconformities of 28.17 feet to the side property line and 39.17 feet to the front property line. <clears throat> Conclusions, the land in question cannot yield a reasonable turn unless a variance is granted. The need for a variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. The granting of a variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. And four, the hardship is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. I don't think that there is the, uh, I'm not sure this is the appropriate place to put it, but I don't think we have any, any conditions of approval to add. Is that a motion? That's a motion. Second. Uh, I'd like to make a suggestion to the mover and the seconder, uh, just because the uh, the issue of reasonable return has been at uh, has been highlighted of late, and just if we could insert uh, something, Mr. Houghton, like uh, unless a variance is granted because a six foot ceiling height and lack of a bathroom on the second floor is uh, not up to current standards for similar properties of the area or something like that. Would we put that under findings of fact? put it under findings of fact, that would be another way to do it. Yeah, I would amend the finding of facts uh, that uh, indicates that uh, the, uh, the present house, the house in its present condition uh, with a less than six foot ceiling height on the second floor and a uh, lack of bathroom on the second floor certainly constitutes a uh, less than desirable uh, habitation for the, uh, the uh, residents. And I would assume in this day and age that it could not yield a reasonable turn unless this variance is granted. Thank you. Second. Is that okay with the seconder? Okay. Moving on to discussion, is there any? I heard somebody take a deep breath. Um, that was, that was just a sigh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was preparatory no, I, to a comment. I wish uh, to reflect what Amory said. Okay. Well said. Right. If there is no further discussion, I'll call the uh, motion to order then. Uh, and all those in favor of approving this application in the manner suggested by the motion, say, say aye or raise your hands. And any opposed? I see none. And the motion carries. Thank you. Um, now, there's a couple of things in our agenda, including one that's actually not here. Uh, would, would you like these blueprints, by the way, Matt? Let's go right into our trash. I don't know if you need this. Mm. <laughs> we have the official copies, so we don't need them. Uh, uh, there are three brief things I'd like to draw to your attention. Uh, 
in the one in the packet or several in the packet. Uh, one is the uh, Shoreland Zoning Newsletter, which is put out by the Department of Environmental Protection, provided to you just as uh, information as to things that are going on in the out there in the world, and uh, nonconformity is is highlighted in the, one of the articles, uh, in several of the articles, actually, relating, obviously, of course, only to the Shoreland Zone area. Was there another reason specifically that you put this in the packet, Bruce, or just No, I just thought it would be nice to pass yeah. on to the board. Thank you. Uh, the second item actually kind of segues into the third. Uh, that is this lengthy packet of materials uh, provided to uh, the, the uh, Town Planning Board by Marina Mera. <clears throat> which is summarizes uh, both the explanation of and the details of the proposed changes to the zoning ordinance, which, uh, as you have been aware from past discussion, has been going on, basically designed to clean things up after having some experience with the new ordinance. And uh, I, for one, didn't see anything significant in, it, uh, in terms of major changes, but and it's not intended to be. So if anybody has any questions or comments on that, uh, I'm sure Bruce or Maureen would like to hear them, unless you want to discuss them with other board members here on open mic night. When uh, did that come to us? Because I don't seem to find mine at the moment. It came in the packet, at least in my packet. It's uh, covered by a memorandum from uh, Marina Mera to the planning board. Did, uh, that's it. Am I the I, only one that got it? I, okay. I already see. You can have mine. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I, well, I may have taken it out and not realized it, but uh, then again, you know. Oh, uh, I found it stuck to Check next to your bed. <laughs> Just getting old. You know. And that segues into the third issue, uh, which is that Bruce asked for a few minutes uh, to discuss the, an issue with relate, a general issue with relation to uh, conditional use. Uh, segues here because what he wants to talk about uh, could well be added to this list of Marines to go before the council uh, after the planning board approves them. So uh, seemed like tonight was a worthwhile taking a few minutes to talk about it. Uh, ordinarily, I would say that uh, we could close the meeting and go into a workshop for this kind of I an item, but given the fact that our meeting was short and this is an interesting issue, I'd be inclined to stay on camera and go ahead and deal with it. Uh, does anybody object to that? It's It's a procedural issue relating to conditional use uh, activity. I, I will have one comment to make before we wrap up on another issue. We have to deal also with, a, with the timing of our next meeting because uh, it's been raised by several people, including me. Uh, Bruce, go ahead. Uh, basically, Maureen and I had, have discussed uh, the status of, of uh, the audience in relation to conditional use approval by the board, and we both uh, feel that, that it may be a uh, somewhat repetitive process for an applicant to go to the Board of Appeals for the conditional use standards uh, and then go to the plan board for a much more intensive review of which they, they, they tend to cover um, in depth the, the application. And it was, it was based on that discussion that, that, that she suggested I go to the board and um, asked the board if it, what, how they feel about the, turning the, uh, uh, that responsibility for conditional uses over to the plan board and make it part of their total package application so it would be a one-stop, one-shop situation for the applicant. I'd buy it. Uh, that would lessen our workload, not that we have a ton of these, but uh, and it would also save the applicant some time, but if any board member has any concerns about uh, duplication being beneficial in this case or something that, you know, we are providing to the process that the planning board with its more extensive review on the same issues can't provide, then we ought to go for the status quo. So how do people feel about it? It, it, uh, it would decrease the, uh, the wait time for the applicant by a month. And uh, I see no problem with that. I mean, it's we're working, working for the applicant in, in that instance. 
I, I believe it makes makes sense in that respect. Yeah. Also. I also think it would make sense because uh, there are times when some of the issues that come up involve issues that the planning board deals with quite a bit more, such as traffic issues. Um, yeah, th those are things that they they deal with much more often, and, and uh, I think we always do a good job with the information we have. But people don't always come prepared to explain all the elements of conditional use to us the way they do to the planning board. Um, and I, I think that makes the planning board a better forum for it. Not that we wouldn't be perfectly capable of doing that, but uh, that, that, that is their job. Mm. And they get paid more than we do, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any other comments? Joe. The procedure was established by, by the town council, or is that, uh, and, and therefore they would have to make the uh, final. They, it's they part would, of the ordinance, the so the ordinance would have to be changed. If, yeah. if the zoning board recommends that that, that that be taken up for consideration, it'll go back for an amendment to the planning board, and in turn it'll be turned over to the council uh, with the rest of the amendments that, that are going forth. Okay. Um, it's unusual to see a government body relinquishing control <laughs> or opportunity to, to uh, uh, review a matter. But uh, I, think, uh, I think it's a good idea in this particular case because I felt awkward uh, in a number of cases uh, reviewing some of these things that came before us when basically we've had no training, no background. Uh, nothing before us uh, to give us guidance. And we just had one here a couple of months ago, uh, and I saw him on, on the, uh, uh, the planning board. Jenner, I'm sure, is the same, same, uh, same spiel. So, yeah, I think it's a good idea. Would appeals on, you, if you make a determination that, is, that a conditional use is in violation, that a use is in violation of, uh, would that still come to us? That would. If 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 it was if I can if it was a violation and they appealed my decision to to cite them for that violation, yes, that would come to the board of appeals. Mm -hmm. The only thing this does is talk talks about new uses that are listed as conditional uses, but would still be listed as conditional uses, but it would be reviewed by the planning board in conjunction with a site plan review. I'm thinking specifically of the veterinary case clinic, the veterinary clinic. Uh, that, that, that would, would still, still come here. That would still come here. Just the, yes. The use was defined. Okay. That was that was an interpretive thing. Don't want to give that one up. Yeah. No. <laughs> what, what about the, uh, the person who wanted to use the, the photography studio? Did that go before the? Yeah. That was. Uh, yes. That would be that would be in their ballpark. That would, what, what the that, that would be the planning board's problem, not ours, if this change were adopted. Uh, if there's no other discussion of it, I, uh, uh, given the uh, unusual nature, as Joe just outlined, I would like to have this memorialized by doing it on the record with a motion rather than just conveying the word by Bruce. Uh, is there a member willing to move that we recommend to the planning board uh, that conditional use review be removed from the ordinance responsibilities of the Zoning Board of Appeals and focused within the Planning Board. Is, is, is that all right? Just that we're making a recommendation. We're recommend. recommendation. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So move. be removed, but it's only advisory. Yes. So move. Have got a motion, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? The logic of it, I guess, I find a little troubling that somebody comes at once a, uh, a change or a, a judgment call on the planning board, it seems to be more in terms, more focused on an overall, I don't know, it's not an individual, they shouldn't address themselves to individual issues, but I suppose they do. You know, never well, they do because they have to do site plan review yeah, on right. many of these things, and if you look at the criteria, listed for conditional use permits, all traffic and yeah. on-site things, and that's, that's why the suggestion came up, because 
Same thing there. It's with very duplicative, and yet, and they're doing more work than we are. Yeah. They seem to be less of a judicial, more of a planning body, mm -hmm. more of a judicial body. But I, I have no problem giving okay. it up. I hope the planning board is going to have a say in this. Oh, well, sure. They're the ones that will have to make the recommendation because the council normally would not take an ordinance recommendation without having the planning board's uh, support. Uh, that being the case, uh, all those in favor of the motion to make this recommendation of the planning board for consideration? Is there anyone opposed? I see none. That recommendation will go forward. Uh, Amor, you had a... Just uh, I, uh, very briefly, you appointed me to, to the Historic Preservation Committee. Study meeting. Committee. Uh, and uh, they're having a meeting on uh, December 17th at 7.30. Do you guys want updates on that or just uh, it, it's not going to be, a, it's only going to be about a six or eight month deal? I think uh, I'd be glad to hear anything you want to bring up, Amory, but I think the primary point was to bring the perspective of this board to that deliberation rather than to see it as an official board duty, you know, collective board duty. Okay. Uh, so... Fine. But, to, but if you want time to say something about it anytime, let okay. me know and we'll provide it. I won't make it a formal deal. I just do it uh, okay. as, as is appropriate. Um, fine. I think we can uh, adjourn the meeting, but we do need to talk about the meeting the next date uh, and see what we can work out among ourselves there. And then Bruce will have to deal with that. So if there's no other official business, uh, I'll declare the meeting adjourned. And... Um, we'll advertise the date of the next meeting. <clears throat> I don't know.